Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live among the stars? Prepare for an exhilarating adventure as we unveil the secrets of life on board SpaceX Starship, where boundless possibilities and extraordinary experiences await. This is Explorium, and welcome to our YouTube channel. Buckle up for an otherworldly experience on SpaceX Starship, because today, you will explore everything about the mission and the spacecraft. Throughout history, our perception of spaceships has been shaped by cramped crew capsules like Apollo, Soyuz, and Dragon. Even the most recent Orion spacecraft is so confined that standing upright inside the command module is impossible. The space shuttle, while an advancement, still falls short of being spacious, though it alleviated its counterpart's claustrophobic nightmare. However, a new era dawns from the advent of the Starship a colossal 9-meter diameter rocket that materializes the dreams of Flash Gordon. Elon Musk envisions this vessel transporting thousands of people on a six-month odyssey from Earth to a Mars colony. The notion is fantastical, but the prospect of spending half a year in a metal box hurtling through the vast void of interplanetary space, no matter its size, raises the bar for the interior environment of the Starship. When envisioning the inside of a spaceship, we have an extensive repertoire to draw upon. The Starship Enterprise pampered its crew members with luxurious condos, providing them with opulent abodes for their interstellar travels. The Millennium Falcon, a more practical vessel, presented a mishmash of tubes and cabins befitting a space pirate. Ideally, the SpaceX Starship would strike a balance between these two extremes. This brings us to the question of crew size. Determining the ideal number of people for a Starship flight is crucial for several reasons. First, each person on board will require significant resources like food and water to sustain themselves. Therefore, considering the maximum load capacity of the Starship, which is 100 metric tons, we must consider the true mass of an individual crew member. Second, the mental health and well-being of the crew will play a pivotal role in long-duration interplanetary missions. If the Starship is overcrowded, with inadequate personal space, crew members may succumb to anxiety halfway to Mars. On the other hand, a few crew members may quickly grow weary of each other's company, potentially leading to conflicts and tension. Most experts agree that a crew of 10 would be the sweet spot for a Starship mission to Mars. Now, let's explore the interior layout of the Starship. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The spacecraft basically measures 50 meters in length by 9 meters in diameter. And uh, I mean, that's 9 meters in diameter, not counting the chines, or roughly 30 feet in diameter. Tapering to a point at the nose. Interestingly, Elon Musk insisted on a more edgy nose after watching the satirical movie The Dictator, starring Sasha Baron Cohen. While amusing to Elon, this design tweak slightly reduces the interior volume. Nevertheless, there is still ample amount of space to work with. The lower portion of the ship is primarily dedicated to rocket-related components, accommodating at least six Raptor engines. By the time of the first crewed Mars flight, this number may be upgraded to nine. Three sea-level engines are reserved for landing burns, while six vacuum engines propel the Starship from low orbit and set its course towards the stars. The massive propellant tanks required for these engines caps off the section culminating in a structure known as the Common Dome. Estimates suggest that this top section will provide around 17 meters of length, likely divided into six vertical levels, considering the height distribution across each level. It would make sense to have higher ceilings in the cargo bay and lower ceilings in the cruise quarters. The approximate clearance from floor to ceiling would be about two and a half meters, allowing for comfortable movement without frequent head bumps. Given the Starship's requirements for vertical landing on Mars, maintaining a low center of gravity becomes very crucial. Thus, we imagine the first floor would be dedicated to the cargo bay. After reaching Mars, the crew would definitely require resources and infrastructure to ensure their survival, such as rovers, robots, and other essentials. It is reasonable to assume that these would be stored in the lowest level, along with the ship's life support systems, power generator, and ground elevator. As the starship is exceptionally tall, a lift system is necessary for boarding and disembarking. Moving to the second level, we would likely find storage for food and essential supplies, maybe even incorporating a hydroponic garden to grow small quantities of fresh vegetables such as leafy greens. A well-equipped gym and bathroom facility would be located on the third level. Physical fitness holds paramount importance during the extended stays in microgravity. Astronauts on the International Space Station devote several hours daily to cardio and resistance training. 
The station strapped down treadmill and stationary bike are important for cardiovascular health and circulatory system maintenance. Weightlifting is equally essential to preserve muscle mass and bone density. While traditional barbells and free weights are impractical in zero gravity, the ISS employs a resistance machine that allows the crew to perform squats and deadlifts with up to 600 pounds of resistance. Unfortunately, a shower post-workout is just not available, as water is a precious resource and does not flow in zero gravity. Astronauts on the ISS resort to wiping themselves down with wet towels and using dry shampoo for their hair. Of course, a space toilet is also a necessary fixture. The design of a zero-gravity toilet for the Dragon capsule is still undergoing refinement, but significant progress is expected before Starship embarks on its Martian journey. Moving up to the fourth level, we reach the crew quarters. The Starship's voluminous interior allows for reasonable sized compartments for each crew member. However, the layout might be oriented vertically to accommodate for the narrowing of the ship. Level 5 presents an ideal space for a common area. This section marks the beginning of the pronounced tapering of the nose. However, there is still sufficient room for individuals to float around and relax in the open space, enhanced by a panoramic view window that wraps around the entire room. The topmost floor would be relatively compact due to the narrow shape of the ship and the placement of the methane header tank on the nose. Consequently, it would serve best as the command deck, where crew members would strap themselves into the seats for launch and landing. While the starship would operate autonomously for the most part, some flight controls would be present. Connecting each level to the central column, a tube facilitating easy travel between floors in zero gravity, and a ladder for use on Earth and Mars. The central column would also house plumbing and wiring while providing structural support to the ship's core. One of the greatest challenges for those aboard the Starship lies in maintaining communication with the people of Earth. Despite their physical isolation and low Earth orbit, astronauts on the International Space Station enjoy continuous internet activity and real-time communication with Earth. However, as the Starship ventures deeper into the interplanetary space, the time delay in communications will become longer until it becomes impossible to engage in a two-way conversation with Earth. By the journey's halfway point, it would take approximately 10 minutes for a message to reach either Earth or Mars and another 10 minutes for a response to arrive. Psychologically, this will be a significant challenge, especially in a modern world where instant and constant connectivity is the norm. Now let's address the critical question of sustaining power and life support systems aboard the Starship. Meeting these requirements will demand substantial electricity and finding a feasible solution is not an easy task. Solar energy immediately comes to mind as it powers the International Space Station. However, it is worth considering that the ISS utilizes enormous solar arrays, prizing eight primary solar wings measuring 112 feet in length and 39 feet in width. Attempting to attach comparable solar panels to the Starship is impractical, as they cannot be folded out and deployed after launch. One possibility could involve constructing a solar panel module in space and attaching it to the ship once it refuels in orbit. However, solar panels face challenges in the quest for sustainable energy on Mars due to the distance from the Sun. Also, landing with such extensive arrays poses complications. But there is one alternative solution, and that is batteries. Tesla's revolutionary battery pack and Powerwall Energy storage line offer a game-changing opportunity. Each Powerwall with a capacity of 13 kilowatt hours can power a typical dwelling for a day. Recharging the power walls on Mars using ground-based solar arrays over months prepares them for a return trip. Yet the downside remains, batteries are remarkably heavy. So what do you think? Despite the difficulties, will Starship be a suitable place for astronauts to live in? And that's a wrap for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If yes, then do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and smash the bell icon for the latest notifications. See you next time.